Well, well, happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Now that's a hashtag. We love it. We are so thrilled that we can spend Thanksgiving Eve with all of you guys. We're a family here on Gaw TV, and you guys are all part of the process with us. So cheers to Thanksgiving. Thank you for being here, right here on Gaw TV. That's a hashtag as well, hashtag Gaw TV. Use that hashtag to join the discussion on social media. And speaking of social media, here on YouTube, we ask that you will like this video, do yourself a favor and subscribe right away. Come on, yeah. somewhere, yeah. somewhere over there. You, 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 you yeah. and you, you, uh, you, <laughs> you subscribe. Especially you, yes. You. <laughs> Get in here and subscribe. And of course, click the bell icon to enable notifications so you never miss a future episode. This is an episode that you do not want to miss because we have a fabulous guest, but we'll get to that in a moment. Ladies, how are we feeling on this beautiful Thanksgiving Eve? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And I'm so thankful that you ladies are here to share it with me. You know? Same here. Same here. Yeah. We talked about it like, oh, Friendsgiving, but we've thrown our own spin on it. Uh -huh. Thanksgiving, darling. Branding. <laughs> darling. Thanksgiving. Lisa's looking pretty in pink. Uh, you'll know why I'm wearing these colors um, with our uh, next guest. So I'll explain that. But oh, um, yeah. thank you guys for being part of my life too. I just want to, you know, since we're being all mushy, 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 Aww. it's like great that we have like such a great connection, you know, like yeah. good friends. We got some good friendships going on, yeah. you know? We sure do. And, and, you know what? and we're rekindling stuff with old friends, bringing them on the show. And then, of course, goes on and on and on and on. And <laughs> what? But it, it's so true because right now everyone's in uh, at least some form of lockdown or some form of crazy pandemic. Everyone's like, you know, not having the Thanksgiving that they're used to. So we hope that this can be something that'll cheer you up and get you excited for the holiday no matter what. Because I love Thanksgiving. We have so many treats in store for you. We talk about food all the time on this show. So today we're actually taking that into another level. Totally yes. another level. Yeah. You know, we're all foodies here. A lot of, a lot of people say, oh, by the time I watch, end up watching the show, I'm so hungry. By the time mm -hmm. I get done, because you guys have just talked about so much food, because we love food. What can we say? So, and, and yeah. Exactly. And when we're, we're watching the live chat, and we start talking about food. And if you see me not um, in the live chat so much, I'm eating. Because <laughs> once some, one of you guys <laughs> mentioned food, I have to eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God TV is great for entertainment, not so good for the waistline. We're just hungry all the time in these chat rooms. Hello to everyone in the chat, by the way. Hopefully you oh, guys yes. are excited about Thanksgiving. But ladies, the, our guest tonight is so, so exciting. I have to say, I know her somewhat, but I'm, I'm also just a huge fan. So can we, we already know who it is, but can we discuss how fabulous this grown ass woman is? Incredible, incredible. I've seen this lady like when she first came in. I remember, you know, working with her then, but really not really having a chance to work with her a whole lot. But I think that the fact that she's navigated this locker room for so long and is still thriving is just amazing. It's just incredible. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I never see her out of wrestling. We were just discussing that on Boxer, how well, that you and Nick were saying, do you think she'll ever get out of wrestling? I, I don't think so either. I think she'll I be think so. 100 years old still in the ring. You Isn't know, that like cool? Yeah, yeah. And family. I love that. I love that. And we, we, you know, the show being called Grown Ass Women, we try to have, you know, some of our friends on here and there, but there are certain people that I think uh, little girls look up to. We talked about that with Paige on the show. And Natty, I know, I always notice how much of a female following she has, which is so, so cool. And she's going to be here to talk about all of her uh, career and, and her life and her real life and her amazing YouTube channels. So ladies and gentlemen, shall we invite her to the Thanksgiving yes. Festival? Yes. Yeah, All right. do it. So do excited. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hey guys. Wow, you look so gorgeous. You Thank look you. beautiful. I just oh, threw I on a little something. <laughs> you look stunning, darling. What did you that? did you I slip into it. something more comfortable for us? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Grown Ass Women TV. We were just talking about you and singing your praises. But first of all, how are you doing? You look very festive tonight. Oh, I'm good. I got my Christmas tree up, if you can see it in the background. Wow. I do. I'll zoom up there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Oh. <laughs> um, I, 
<laughs> yeah, I got that up yesterday. Um, you know, I, I was a real multitasker yesterday. We had Survivor Series. I put up a Christmas tree. Um, I managed to clothesline the living daylights out of Lacey Evans. <laughs> So I'm good. I'm here. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so proud of you from last night. That was so great. You guys. You oh, guys, thank I you. Knew you guys were gonna kill it, but I'm, I'm, it was great. It was great. It and was then, a lot of fun. It was. It was fun. really fun. Yeah. So, and I also but, brought my wine because you guys said okay. that we were gonna do a little toast. Ooh, we, should okay. we just do a toast at least now in the beginning, yes, just to say thank you sure. for being here and thank you for being fabulous. Oh of, course. <laughs> of course. Cheers. 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 <laughs> I love it. She goes from decking the halls at her house to decking divas left and right. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Why not? That's well, a good way of putting it. Tell us about Survivor Series. What was the vibe there? I mean, Undertaker's Farewell, it's all everyone's talking about still on social media. Yeah, it was really, it was awesome. I mean, it was just a really cool night. And I think, you know, it was a little bittersweet for everyone because obviously, you know, celebrating 30 years of Undertaker. Um, it's hard to believe that 30 years, like, I don't even know where the time goes. Right. Um, but when you think about what he's contributed to WWE and to contributed to the wrestling industry in general, um, how many careers he's influenced, how many people that he's touched, how many um, lives that he's changed. And then, you know, yesterday it felt, for me, it just felt, um, I felt like mixed emotions because, in my heart, I just believe that WWE and the wrestling industry, whether whether you're part of WWE or you're part of Stampede Wrestling or whatever promotion you work for, it becomes like a family. And it's like that song, Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. And so I wasn't really like, I didn't really say goodbye to him. I was just like, we'll see you later. Because I know that I, I feel like he's ready to leave. Obviously, you know, if you've seen that movie or the docuseries, uh, The Last Ride, mm -hmm. You, you get a taste of like what he was going through and that, you know, he kept getting called back. But I just don't ever believe that we, anybody's ever retired from this because it just becomes a big part of your moral fiber and who you are and what makes you tick. And it's, you know, it's always going to be a part of him. And, and just like, it's always going to be a big part of my life and Mickey's life and Lisa Marie's life. It's, you know, it's like Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. I so I, I wasn't ready to say goodbye. <laughs> oh. I've never heard I that. Don't, for Natty, that's so good. The Hotel California song is so true. Yeah, so it, 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 it really is. And I like when my dad was alive, he would always compare it to that because he, you know, even though when he was older, he couldn't wrestle anymore, he always just felt like it was a big, like he said to me, um, and I said this in my Hall of Fame, like when my, not my Hall of Fame, but when my dad was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, one of the last texts that my dad ever sent me, this is before I got attacked on stage. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Before oh, Brett, yeah. Hey, yeah. you got to talk about that. What? Oh, before, my. Everyone before remembers Brett where they attacked. were when that happened. Yeah. Like, that's how big um, of a deal it was. Holy guacamole. I just saw yeah, Maddie was disappear crazy night, underneath but the body of fighting I, men. <laughs> oh, that was, that was a crazy night. But I was just, bit, like, when I was on stage, I was explaining that my dad's text, last text message to me was, um, we were talking about writing a book about his life. And I said, you know, daddy, you can share all these great things. You can talk about, you know, my dad was a world-class shot putter. He was one of the best shot putters in the United States when he was 18 mm -hmm. years old. Um, actually number one in the country and his record still hasn't been broken in California. Wow. So he's just like a, yeah, he had an incredible track and field, you know, career and uh, played in the NFL for the Dallas Cowboys and the Oakland Raiders and, you know, went to WWE and did a bunch of amazing things there. So I, I was trying to tell my dad in these text messages, like, you should write a book. Like, we should write a book. It'll be really great. And my dad goes, oh, Natty, all that other stuff doesn't matter. Like, most, what I'm most proud of is what I did in WWE. I was always a wrestler. That's what I was. I'm a wrestler. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to talk about my track and field. I don't want to talk about football. I'm just a wrestler. But, like, right. he was saying it like he was just so proud of it. And I think about Undertaker and, like, that is just going to be such a big part of his whole, you know, identity from here on out. Not that he can't be an amazing family man, not that he can't start a new chapter in his life, which he's already started a new chapter, you know, just being with his family and, and taking time with them. I mean, I feel like this pandemic has forced all of us to start a yeah. new chapter, <laughs> Absolutely. but he's always going to have, um, the wrestling world in his heart and it'll always be with them and he'll continue to inspire. Yeah, totally. Well, you think about too, the, the amount of time that he was not only like leader of the locker room, but like 
We, it's so funny because we said, we just said this about you and we were just talking about, I was like, I don't think Natty will ever not be involved in the wrestling business in some capacity. Like I yeah, really going out there, just kicking ass. At yeah, I just love it. I, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm going to be like Mae Young. <laughs> But I, I really do love it. We and just today, said that. Like, we yeah. don't talk about that. <laughs> well, I just, I think it's, I just have so much fun and I've grown up around it since I was a kid. And, you know, when you grow up like with your grandfather's house and the, like the dungeon and we had a wrestling ring in our backyard and, you know, we, when we were kids, we had our own kids wrestling promotion and it's just a big part of my life. It's a big part of like my husband's life. It's, you know, TJ's, he loves what he's doing in WWE. And I never, ever, ever thought that he would enjoy being a producer. Cause I, I always just feel like producers are sort of the unsung heroes of the company. Oh, um, yeah. But TJ just loves it. He really, he like, it, 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 he's very inspired by helping people. And um, not, not to say that I, you know, I don't know if I would ever fall into that role. I'm not saying I would be against it, but I don't know if I have the patience to be a producer. <laughs> You've got to have patience. You've got the patience of like having to deal with everybody coming at you with what they want. It's a lot. It's a balancing act because you're trying to, I can't imagine. It's a lot of stress, but I've had TJ as a producer and I will say he's amazing yeah. at it. He's so Yeah. Great. He's, he's he really him. understands the business and he understands like, he knows what everybody does and he loves working with the girls. And I think, you know, when you have somebody like Fit Finley that, you know, Fit worked with me and I know he worked with Lisa um, and obviously you, Mick, like he worked with us like our whole entire careers in WWE. Yeah. And so, you know, now that TJ has kind of jumped into the role of working with the women, just because it kind of just happened that way, it wasn't like a choice. It just was sort of like, okay, TJ, you're with the girls now. I think he just had such big shoes to feel, fill with fit that he's like, I can't ever be like fit, but I'm going to bring whatever I can bring to the table to the best of my ability. And so while he's different than fit, he brings, he brings a lot of really great qualities too. And like fits more like, for me, fits like a dad, you know, yeah. like he's, I was, was like, going to say Natty, I was going to say that when you're a producer or an agent, you're a therapist as well. Who do we go <laughs> cry on? Like our shoulder, like we're like going, Hey, they're not using me. Um, what am I doing something wrong? Like he would hear all of us complain and cry and go through all this turmoil and our happiness. He knew so much about us. He was like a therapist, right? Yeah. Ex I mean, fit was just all, there was never a moment where I couldn't go to fit. Even when he was really busy, I would go to fit and just talk to him. And what I realized, like, especially after being in WWE for over a decade is that fit was such a great listener. He just listened. And sometimes, and I try to tell TJ that, <laughs> sometimes, I <don't, laughs> sometimes I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to listen to me. Just listen, let me bitch. Let me say what's on my mind. Let me get it out of my system. Let me like vent and then I'm fine. Like, I think that listening, you know, for, for listening is, is not the easiest thing, but it was so good at it. So I'm trying to teach TJ, like, you don't have to fix everything. And, and TJ's doing a great job, but I think it's also tricky because we're married. Right. So married sometimes, like, right? because you know. You are married, right? So then he's like, oh, I don't, are you mad at me? Or wait, no, it's just the match. You're like, no, I just want to have a discussion with you. I can see that, like, where it's uh, got to be more difficult for you, too, when yeah. he's an agent. You know, even though you know it's going to be amazing because he's your agent, you know what I mean? But it's like but we all have our frustrations and everything. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so yeah. that, and you try to express that frustration and, and like, it's like, wait a minute, you have to separate the wife from the wrestler, you know, yeah. and by the, the husband from the producer. It's, it's a difficult working together. Like, even just yeah. work show with your significant other is already difficult. But when you're in that kind of position, it's a separate strength. It's like, crazy it's, it's a whole different ball of wax and it's like because sometimes something will be good for me and he'll be excited to give me the news and then sometimes it's like okay the business today is we got to do this for this person we got to make sure this person gets spotlighted we got to do and sometimes it means me taking a back seat which is fine because as we all know it's everything not just wwe but everything is very you know it's like a wheel that goes around and and sometimes it's your time to shine sometimes like it feels really good to help somebody else shine um, right. I'm always just big about like, as, as long as everybody gets that chance to shine, because right. if, if you work hard and you have lots of talent and you have a great attitude and you're passionate about what you do, we have a show, you know, WWE produces, we produce so much content every week that there's no reason why 
everybody that works their ass off shouldn't have a moment in the sun. Yeah, especially with like the network and the, all the social media platforms and how many followers they have on all these various platforms. Like there's so much content. They put a ton of content out, but there's even more stuff that I don't even think that we've explored that could really, you know, shine a lot of strengths and different strengths that you don't even know that a lot of the people have, you know, like, yeah. Something. Well, you know. for me too, like even just having done, you know, I forget sometimes like we've done a hundred nearly 150 episodes of total divas. So while I was, you know, do it while I was for seven years of being in, you know, that's how long our, um, that's how long we filmed total divas for, but I was also on the road full time. So sometimes, yeah. because like when you, this year was the first year of my career that I, like we were all forced to stop and slow down. But yeah. like, I was like, oh my God, how, I went from like working 300 days a year to working once a week. And it, it was a huge like life change for me to be like, I almost felt like I wasn't doing enough. Like I'm not busy enough. I'm not enough. I'm not accomplishing enough. I'm not. But the thing is, is that we were all kind of in the same boat. Even The Rock was in that boat yeah. of like, okay, I can't go film a movie today because Hollywood is shut down. So yeah. now I have to focus on my family. I have to, you know, fix that light bulb that I didn't want to change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to, I actually have to like, you know, handle some real things in my life. So it's been, you know, it's, it's all, it's all balanced, but it's been an interesting year. For it, sure. It's been so interesting. And so in some ways productive for us, because, you know, we, we started God TV around May and we've been talking about doing a show, but then we kind of went, okay, now we have the friggin' time to do it, which is great. And this, this question is kind of twofold because first of all, Mickey touched on the fact that you work with your husband. And I wanted to ask about how it is working with family. Also, you've been working with your sister on the Night Hearts, which is on YouTube, right here on YouTube. So how has it been, uh, you know, being creative in lockdown, but also working with your sister? I have two older sisters and I love them dearly but we get at each other once in a while. So how has that been? <laughs> Fill the tea. <laughs> it's, it's been fun. I mean, we, Jenny and I are very close. We, um, she wanted to be on tonight, but she had to work. So she's sorry that she couldn't join us. Um, but we started Jenny. the same thing. Like we started doing our YouTube really because of the pandemic. We were like, well, we want to just continue to like put stuff out there and just kind of have a platform. And, you know, obviously we can't, you know, we're not working the same way that we used to where we can be around fans and people, but you know, Jenny has, Jenny is such a beautiful person and she's got such a bright personality and you know, she's, she's also really shy. So I was like, I wanted to help Jenny kind of come out of her shell. Um, but for me, I love the production side of things as far as like producing a show. Mm -hmm, so right. it's like you have to come up with an idea. You have to continue to create content. That's the biggest challenge is finding the content. Yeah. You know, to go, what's our episode this week going to be on? Okay, it's going to be on our favorite Halloween candy. And then yeah. we get dressed up and then we practice speaking and then we edit the videos. And it's, for me, I just want to create and I want to feel productive. And I know that's what a lot of the people, you know, not people, but a lot of the superstars in WWE are feeling right now too, is that we just all want to be productive. We understand, yeah. okay, you're on Raw, you work Mondays. You're on SmackDown, you work Fridays. If you're on NXT, you work Wednesdays, but like during the week, we just want to find ways to continue to connect with, um, with the world. And that's what the, that's what our YouTube channel allows us to do. And it's, it's helped me as far as like speaking more because it's, it comes along with like, you know, I was even talking with, uh, who was I talking uh, Sasha Banks. I was saying to Sasha the other day, I was like, if you only get the mic once every six months to cut a promo, you can't build off of that in order yeah. to get better at anything especially speaking you have to do it you know if you don't use it you lose it so and that's what she was saying is like the more she speaks the more she gets you know reps the, the better she is at it and that's again what what our youtube channel has allowed us to do is just to be fun let loose and even more so than let's just say total divas or anything backstage at wwe it's like pulling down every wall so that it's like you know, the cat jumps on the counter and knocks over gravy or, you know, uh, you have a wardrobe malfunction or somebody falls off a chair. It's like the unedited, unedited version. And I think people yeah. really, I think people are craving to see the most unedited versions of everything. Totally. Right. Totally. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. We talk yeah. about that a lot. And I've, I've told the girls that with me, you know, doing like hosting and that kind of stuff, that's always been my favorite thing. Like you said, creating the content, but also just being a host and just talking, you know, nonsense all day. Some of the, the best times that I learned how to just, BS 
uh, was like when, say, there was a show going on and the ring broke, and they said, okay, you have to kind of vamp for 45 minutes, and there's nothing to talk about, but you sort of, it's like a muscle that you sort of work out and you flex. It's like the, yes. the more you BS, the more you can just talk on camera. It just gets easier and easier, and I, I talk with a lot of influencer, blogger-type gals who are like, you know, I can create content that's photographs all day long. I can model, but when it comes to just putting my phone up to my face and talking, I get stage fright, which is funny. Yeah. For me, all I do is just talk crap all day, but because you're not used to it, it can be very difficult, especially for some wrestlers, I think. That's why, you know, there are managers and things like that, but I think it's forced everyone to be really, really creative. We were just talking to um, Jay Lethal about that, and no matter what company you're in, like you said, there are ways to keep in touch with the audience, like, hey, I'm still here. You can still keep, keep up with my life, and your show is hilarious. I was sending the girls some clips of, uh, yeah. of a body slam uh, demonstration that you did. <laughs> <laughs> That was so funny. To my mom, was that the one? No, it was to it was to Jenny, and then Lana was there as well. <laughs> I body slammed a few people in my house. Um, <laughs> um, we love to wrestle in this house. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I tried. Yeah, the one where there's one where I was putting Jenny in the sharpshooter, and she, she, it, it was so. This is actually a funny story. This is what I go. This was what goes back to that unedited, unedited version. But um, when we were putting the, we have a girl that helps us edit our videos. Her name is Courtney. And I was putting Jenny in the sharpshooter and her skirt came up and she was wearing like a, she was wearing underwear underneath, but they were like a nude thong. And she had like a nude oh. thong on. <laughs> Long story short, in the unedited version, um, which I sent to our girl Courtney, I thought I was just sending it to her to edit. And I said, make sure to take out that part. When I, t and when I turned Jenny over in the sharpshooter, her skirt kind of comes up. So it, it showed her bottom. And again, right. you can see that she's wearing underwear, but she just, just kind of like, it was a little bit, she was kind of exposed, like her bottom was exposed. And Courtney goes, Natty, you accidentally posted that. Like it's live. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't know I did that. And so this video, it was live for like 15 minutes. And I was like, I had no idea that like, because we were still, it was like our third video that we did. Yeah, it's yeah. gotten almost, a, it's gotten close to a million views and so we, we took it down immediately, but it, it was just that unedited version of me turning Jenny over, her bottom being kind of exposed and then like her pulling her skirt down. It, it was like, and I, I was, I felt so stupid and, all, and on Jenny's Instagram, like people were constantly posting like, when your sister got put in the sharpshooter, you could see your butt. And like, Jenny's <laughs> like, Natty, I can't believe you sent that to Courtney. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like this is, this kind of stuff happens to me, but Oh, but um, yeah. we have a lot of little shenanigans that happen. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. And I, lo I love that you can create that with your sister, you know what I mean? And like, just make it a family affair. I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 We just yeah. want to have fun. I think people right now just want to have fun with all the craziness going on in the world with, you know, every time I turn on the news, every time I, you know, I have to take breaks from it. Like, I can't watch the news. I can't, I can't always be on social media because it can be kind of overwhelming for your mental health. You know, even Lana actually was talking about that on her documentary, um, The Chronicle. I saw that. Mm -hmm. And she, oh, I just thought it was so powerful because she was saying, like, people were saying she should, once her husband had been let go, um, you know, during that, for, during the pandemic, uh, when all those cuts were made, you know, she said that she was getting attacked and people were saying terrible things to her and she was opening up about all of it in that WWE Chronicle. And it was just like, I felt so bad for her because... I know exactly what she's talking about. People can just be so mean, whether they're like, you're old, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, you know, you're boring. It's like, well, when I was the, you know, when I didn't have the championship, they were telling me I should have had the championship. Once I won the championship, they were telling me I shouldn't have had, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you guys don't know what you want. <laughs> yeah, make them happy, Natty. Yeah. Can't make them happy. You know that's what? why you gotta drink, that's why you gotta have a glass of red wine. Because you know you gotta have a little red. bit of, yeah. Little bit yes, of cheers. Cheers to that. So we do a special segment on our show um, where we do, we talk about who we're wearing, what we're drinking, and we thought like, oh, what do we bring for supper? Because it is Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, yes. Thanksgiving, if you will. Yes. And we all need our little yeah. special dishes. So as Mickey said, the segment is, who are you wearing, what are you drinking? And we're also gonna add, what have you brought to Thanksgiving dinner? So. I'm just wearing a vintage kimono. I love to be uh, a little bit, you know, comfy but glam and, and, and all my different kimonos, a lot of vintage stuff, which Natty, I can't wait to hear what you're wearing because I know you're a fashionista. So that's going to be the highlight of the yeah. show for me. <laughs> <laughs> but just wearing some vintage stuff, some sparkles, um, drinking some lovely champagne. 
which has to do with what I made for Thanksgiving dinner. Now, the ladies know that I am not by any means very good in the kitchen. I mean, I love a cute apron <laughs> that I never wear, but I'm not much of a cook by any means. But I do love sort of the the appetizers and I kind of like the lead up into the Thanksgiving dinner or Thanksgiving dinner. So I love dips. I love chips and dip, but I thought, how can I make this somewhat more healthy? And I also love the champagne on Thanksgiving. So is there a way to sort of eat champagne? Is there a way to get more champagne into my system? So I made champagne cheesecake fruit dip. And you, d I, I put the little recipe up on Instagram TV. And it is champagne, light cream cheese, very easy to follow recipe. We're going to put all of the recipes up on our social medias, but I thought it was very elegant. And again, it's another way to just have more champagne on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care. And Natty, for another healthy recipe, you made a gorgeous salad. Is that right? I did. I'm going to hold it up without spilling it. Ooh, um, this salad is like this. I, I have this salad. Like um, it, I have it, it's hard to it's hard to show you, but I, I make it. this salad. It's actually very intricate. It's like it takes me a, takes me like about solid thirty minutes to make it because there's a lot that goes into that. But I make the salad probably five nights a week, and it's really really good for your entire body. There's so many nutrients, so many antioxidants. It, it's it's also very good for your adrenal glands, which I'm learning a lot about adrenals and just like making sure to keep my adrenal glands very healthy. Um, but uh, the reason why I, I bring this up is because, you know, when we wrestle, we need to have that adrenaline to keep us, you know, like, yeah. it's like when you work out, have you ever taken a pre-workout and yeah. it hasn't really worked for you? It's because your adrenal glands aren't kicking in. So it's important to have that. You need to feel nervous. Like I, I like being nervous before I wrestle because it keeps you safe, it keeps you on your toes. It gives you that you know, adrenaline. So this salad is something that actually feeds your adrenal glands. It's all natural. I use romaine lettuce. I use tomatoes. Um, I use a lot of avocados in that, in my salad. And they have to be kind of not too soft, not too hard, but I put in, there's not, you can never have too many avocados. There's like three full <laughs> avocados in that. There's crab meat. I use honey. Um, I drizzle honey in it. I use sea salt. I use olive oil and I use Kalamata olives. And then I squeeze fresh squeezed lemons in, into it as well. So there's no salad dressing in it. It's just the, all of the juice from the olives, the juice from the tomatoes, um, and then the honey and the sea salt and the lemons. And that makes the dressing, which is just so good for you. Olives are extremely good for you. The tomatoes, uh, there's a little bit of red onion in there and it's, it's low cal, it's low carb. And again, it's just super good for your adrenals. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little festive, I'll throw in blueberries. Um, you can throw in, you know, if you don't want crab meat or you're allergic to fish, you can throw in chicken or I turkey or you can just leave that out. But I love the salad and I actually got I've gotten a few of the girls at work uh, hooked on this salad and they love it, especially when, you know, you got to wear spandex at work. You got to look good. So. <laughs> it sounds like even I could make it. So that means it's, it's, it's pretty damn. Yeah. Anybody can make it. It's super healthy. It's super lean. And it's like great for your system. Great for your, great for your whole body. Well, you know what else is great for your whole body? The kind of fashion that you serve continuously, my dear. What are you wearing today? Yeah. What are you wearing? Um, I have to I say, have a... before you came on, we were talking about your fashion sets, and they were like, oh, my God, Val, you know, she loves designers. She's very educated in fashion and knowledgeable. And I was like, you don't think I know that? Gail Kim used to tell me all the time about your wardrobe, and she was like, Val, it is, like, just every – and she's like, she's, she never looks like, oh, she's slumming it immaculate, polished, those are the words that people use when describing your fashion. So oh, you're out well, yeah. I mean, during this pandemic, all I've worn is like black Lululemon leggings and a black t-shirt. <laughs> but I have, I love clothes, I love fashion. My friend um, made this kimono, it's, uh, his name is Javon Terrence, he's out of Cleveland. He's a local designer out of Cleveland. He's getting to be a really good, like up and coming designer. Um, but he makes a lot of custom pieces for me. He may be my outfit for the Hall of Fame when my dad was getting inducted. And I really like supporting people that have passion for what they do. And he's, he's an incredible designer. I'll give you his handle so you guys can tag him. Um, but I, I love clothes. I like, I think the older I've gotten, the more that I like just buying nice pieces and not, I don't like to buy a lot of clothes. I just like to buy a few nice pieces. Yeah. So that I can wear them a lot and I can like I have things in my closet from like 10 15 years ago that were like a beautiful coat that you know it was expensive but like I buy it once and I have it forever 
a nice mm-hmm. pair yeah. of shoes. I buy it once and I have it forever. Like all of my nice stuff, I really save. Um, yeah. So I, I like to buy nice pieces. And unfortunately, a lot of those pieces are black. So I sometimes show up like Wednesday Adams to <laughs> events. I'm like, it's TJ's like, you just cheap. wear black. Yeah, but it's about investment pieces. And I think the older we get, the more we appreciate that and cost per wear and not just going, yeah. having just stuff for the sake of having it says me, don't look behind me. Not that I shop a lot. Uh, but what are you drinking <laughs> also? <laughs> what am I? Oh, I'm drinking a wine from Napa. My aunt, Debbie, my dad's only sister, she lives in Napa and she lives near a winery. It's called Jacuzzi Wine. And um, I'm drinking a glass of Sangiovese from Napa. My aunt for my birthday sent me a bunch of wine and I still have some of it left over. So I'm just having some Napa wine. I've kind of gotten, I've gotten to be a little bit of a wino. Like, Yay! I, really, <laughs> I love a I ser- yes, I seriously yes. like a nice glass of wine. Like, and it doesn't have to be expensive. There's a great wine that I love. You guys have to try it. If you like red wine, it's at Publix, or you could probably get, I don't know what you guys call, what your grocery store is out there, but in Florida, we have a grocery store called Publix, and um, it's 20 bucks a bottle. It's called uh, Educated Guess, and it's like a Cabernet. It's a cab, but it's so it. good. It's like biting into a cherry. And it's, oh. it's really, it's from Napa too, but it's like a great price point, great wine. You know, it's, it's just so good. It'll definitely settle your tea kettle. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting Settle for that. your tea kettle, ladies. <laughs> you always said that. <laughs> always that. said that. Oh, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear about what you're wearing because I think your color choices were very apropos. I did it purposely for Natty. I love I, that. Black, black and pink. And I just had, I don't really a lot, wear a lot of pink. So I found a Pitbull Rescue um, that I got from a Comic-Con. Uh, my, and and speaking, speaking of Lululemons. <laughs> we yeah. love our Lululemon. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And I'm drinking um, a wine. I ran out of my fresh fine wine. Sorry, guys. But um, we bought, my, my boyfriend smoked cigars. And so he got $100 off of an order. And so he got me some fancy, fancy stuff. Oh. Jose Hernandez Reserve. I don't know the brands. I'll be honest with you. Ooh, me. that looks great. Bit, it, it's a little above my budget. <laughs> you you <laughs> can't. Uh, it's, it, this, this is a little fancy with a little golf ball on top. But um, yeah, that's what I'm drinking. And um, I got this new wine glass. And, Ooh, that's oh, that's love great. that. Aww. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, because ODB told me that my background was plain, so I bought all my red red towels, uh, my red spatulas from the Dollar Tree, my tea the kettle. Tree. Yeah, yeah. And so and then I saw the red glasses at Ross today, and I was like, perfect. Set designed by ODB. Perfecto. ODB original set for design. Fancy for Thanksgiving, yes. Mm-hmm. Lisa, yeah. you prepared, yeah. when I say prepared, like you oh. went all out, girl. Like you prepared a Thanksgiving treat. You're, bring, you're bringing the meat, which is probably an I, YouTube show that we don't want anything to do with, but you're bringing the meat here. I brought, I, I made pot roast, you know, um, I, all the fresh vegetables, um, onions, carrots, um, small potatoes, um, beef broth, and we, I got the beef broth from the dollar store, but I like the bone beef broth, you know, that organic stuff, that's really good. <laughs> That's the real good stuff. You're okay, like, so I should yeah, I should use that. Is this dollar store? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dollar store, the 99 cent store. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I live I live at that those stores, Maddie. I can't get out of those stores. I'm like <laughs> aisle by aisle. I'm like going, this is just a dollar. Oh my, we have to get it. We have to get it. It's just I a need dollar. It. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. But um yeah, I made it I made a pop post. Yes, delicious. Sure That's it. awesome. A lot, a lot of roughage in it because, you know, we're all getting a little older. <laughs> use, a, use a little extra fiber, you know. But yeah, but I, I wore, my outfit was because of Natty. And, oh. Um, yes, yes. And so I miss you so much. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I honestly. miss you too. You're, honestly, it's like you were just such a great role model for all these men and women, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? You're such a hard oh. worker, very giving. And um, I got to, I was lucky to be your tag partner um, when you started. And um, no one really got to see our singles match, but I never got to work with you like fighting. Each I know. Other. That I was, know. Like, yeah. Do you have shame. pictures of that? Don't you have some pictures, I, Lisa? Yeah, I have pictures when we were tagging. 
Yeah, when we are best oh. friends, when I made the shirt. That yes, I, I remember that. I still have yes. that shirt. I still Do have you? that shirt. I have like a wrestling. Yeah, I save everything. I save all that rest. I, all my wrestling stuff oh. I have in a special room. Right there. Look at Maddie. Oh, baby. Oh. Maddie. Oh, yeah. that is so fun. We had so much fun. Oh, no, we, we had so much fun. And it's funny because I think like when I look back on people that I didn't get to work with very much, I mean, I, I tagged with Beth. I tagged mm -hmm. with um, you, Victoria. And I, I, I still in my, I still call you Victoria. Cause that's, how, <laughs> that's, that's okay. like, that's so what I met. Real. When I meet someone, that's what their name is to me. When I first yeah. meet them, that's what I call them. Um, but but like I never got a like I had one singles math match with Beth. I had one singles match with you, uh, Mickey. I didn't get to work with Mickey ever until she came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mick, and then we yeah, and then we had one, yeah, then we had like, some really good matches. And TJ said he's like, just so you know, Mickey is the only person in this company besides me because TJ had an ACL injury. He goes, Mickey James is the only person that doesn't wear a knee brace after her surgery. He goes, I'm telling you, it's impressive because everybody yeah. comes back and, but Mickey had her knee replaced and didn't wear a brace and, <laughs> and literally was wanting to do all this crazy stuff. I think it's <laughs> insane, but it's like, I know that I do a lot of stuff with my knees. You know, I come at you with my knees on my fez press. I do my head scissors out of the corner. It's my knees around your ears. Like, yeah. if, if I was more of a grounded wrestler where I didn't do all this stuff where my legs are going around your head, I would be more yeah. comfortable wearing a knee brace. But I'm not really worried about, I'm not really, I'm more worried about my opponent and like accidentally hurting them when a lot of it would be hurting them in their face. It's not like I'm going to hurt you in your, arm or hurt you in your leg or your tummy i'm going for your face with it you know what i mean yeah that's i mean that's, yeah. That's when i had my, when i had my knee repaired i i was so like the first year after i had it like if you don't have them fixed i, I think lisa you didn't have yours fixed right you just wore the brace no, never yeah just a brace yeah yeah so Isn't my uncle yeah my uncle owen he never had he had a torn acl too and he never got his fixed either um, but like some people just, you know, you can, you can, you don't have to get them fixed. Steve Austin didn't, I don't think he got his fixed from what I remember, but, but, um, when I got my ACL repaired, I was so mentally not confident. I was so like scared that I wore my brace for like a year after that. And then I ended up accidentally cracking my own head open with my brace. So then I was like, I can't wear this anymore. It's like hindering, like Mickey said, it's hindering me from moving, but Mickey had literally only had, like she'd been back like I think it was I don't know how long maybe nine months since your surgery or a year you came back and you didn't wear the brace and TJ was TJ was so impressed he's like you don't get how hard that is to come back and not wear a brace after you have that surgery it's it's all mental y'all are so sweet but I feel like it was because I had more time because I didn't come back you know typically when you come back from that injury you're trying to hurry up back hurry up yeah back in the middle of the pandemic like right in the I was supposed to be cleared right around mania Right. Right, at, right before WrestleMania, I was supposed to be cleared, but then I ended up not even getting cleared because everything shut down. So I was, I had like a legit year almost. To heal. To, like to try to heal and prep or whatever. And even still, like you say, it's, it's not a hundred percent the same ACL that my other one is or that it was. Yeah. I mean, it's stronger and it's tighter because it's whatever, but the rehab around it, the muscles and stuff. But when yeah. I think it's a psychological thing for me out there, like I feel like it's hindering me and my movements and it's hindering, like I, I just also would second guess myself because I wouldn't want to hurt my opponent over something. Yeah. Which is how well, I, I loved wrestling you. I, lo I loved it so much. It, it was so much fun. Yay. So. I wish you'd gotten a chance to do it a lot more, you know, like even the first run, like when you, when you first came on the scene and then like when I was there and we had that triple threat match and I think we had one other match, but that's it, until we came back and we've wrestled a few other times. And then we had the angle with you and Lana, like that's really like the only chances we really had to actually wow, work. Wow. That's it. It's yeah. not a whole bunch that we've been wow. in the ring. Yeah, we yeah. haven't, that's, it's crazy. There's been so many people that I haven't had a chance. Like I've never, like I said, I had one match against Beth. I had one singles match against Victoria. I had one, like I barely worked with you, Mick. Melina and I barely, We. I, I think maybe I had two matches with Melina. Like there were some girls that I just never worked. And then there were some girls that I worked a ton. Like I worked with Michelle and Layla for like two, three years straight. You know, so it's like, it's just funny how you work with certain girls and then you go your whole career and you're like, I barely worked. I never worked her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bailey, I've never worked a singles match against Bailey. 
So it's like, it's so funny. She's been, you know, there in WWE for four or five years. We've never worked a singles match. I'm like, how does that happen? <laughs> I, I only worked with Melina one time, one time too in WWE. Yeah. And then my, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so it's, crazy. It's, and it's a shame because like, like when you have the closest friends, those are the best matches you have because you can yeah. joke around and be really free and make little sly comments to make each other laugh. Do you, do you know yeah. what I mean? Still be in the moment, but still have fun. And relax if you and accidentally tag, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. It's, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what I love about what we do is just, you know, connecting with people. And like when you have matches, it, it really creates that emotional and personal connection with people that you'd never have connected with before. Like Lacey Evans, for example, like because she was so new coming in like, when she debuted, she was, you know, I, I had all this experience and it was like, okay, what can I, what can I do with Lacey? And that, those are my favorite kind of matches is working with someone that's never really, who doesn't have the background that I do and being like, I want to see what we can do. I know what we, I know we can do something great. You know, yeah. sometimes it's, it's, it's more tricky sometimes when you're in there with somebody super experienced and it's, it's not that you're, he, not that you're headbutting, but I personally love working with people that just have little experience and we can create and grow together. Like Lana, Lana and I have been training a lot together and I love watching her grow and learn. Um, but I've also trained with Sasha and Sasha and I come together and collaborate and come up with cool things. And so it's, it's nice to be able to work with a different group of girls, you know, but I, there's so many girls that I haven't even had a chance to work with yet that I'm like dying to work with like Bianca yeah. and, you know, Rhea Ripley and, um, Bailey, for example, that I can't wait to work with even Oscar. I never really, I, I had one match with Oscar on raw that was like three minutes long. Yeah. And I, I would love to do like more, more with her. So yeah. there's, there's a few good ones that I'd like really like to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. just from the fan standpoint of things, um, there's such a diverse group of girls now that, you know, there's, it's like freaking Baskin Robbins. There's something for every taste, you know, Bailey, yeah. and Sasha and Bianca, as you said, and, and Peyton Royce and all these names that um, just as a fan, it's just fun to watch the diversity that's happened in the last few years. That's really, really exciting. And progress. Yeah, yeah it's it, there's so, there's just so many talented women and so many different as you know Pat Patterson used to say flavors of ice cream. There's so many people for, you know there's so many different girls like Naya's different, Shayna's different, Oscar's different, Bianca's different, Bailey's different, Sasha's different. Like there's something for everyone, but there's also I don't I I think wrestling is a lot like poetic license. It's there's no real right or wrong as long as you get emotionally connected with something. Sometimes things work out great. Sometimes things will come apart. Sometimes you have an amazing match. Sometimes, sometimes it's all, it's just in somebody's face. Like I've been telling Lana, like a lot of her facials and her, a lot of her acting has been so good that mm. it's more so her acting that's getting me emotionally connected to her than even in what she's doing in the ring, you know, like her facials and her, she had a match with Naya like two weeks ago on raw and Naya just beat, the daylights out of uh, Lana. But I felt so bad for Lana after that match. And that for me as a fan, watching yeah. it. Um, and I know like Victoria, I, I kind of turn into a fan when I'm watching it. I'm like, oh no, like poor yeah. Lana. You know, you get like- Yeah, yeah. 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 I mark you out, really, I'm like, that marks out. I get very emotionally invested in watching matches. But that's, that's good like, because I think yeah. that as, as much as we love doing it ourselves, we also still need to be fans. Yeah. And yeah. when I watched Lana, you know, get her ass kicked by, by Naya, I understood the story. I knew who was, who was good. I knew who was bad. I felt sad for Lana. She wasn't trying to be this badass. She was just somebody that was going through something and struggling. And I could really, I think that resonated with a lot of people. And it's like, when I look at Lana's character right now, she's like really a true baby face on raw that i'm going she's not trying to be a badass she's just like somebody that you go wow i get that i feel sorry for her i want right. her to do great i want her to kick naya's ass i want her to prove everyone wrong sometimes yeah. that comes from more of that emotional than even something that she's doing in the ring like a move right you know so that i look for a lot of that in people too that you know i'm like wow i want to do more of that or i want to like i find inspiration in all sorts of things and i i think when you feel like you don't have any more to learn or you don't want to grow anymore. I think that's like a bad sign. I always want to just yeah. keep on growing and learning and not breaking down and melting down. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cry. They, they always say like, if you're not nervous before a match, it's time to get out. Yeah. You know, I yeah. get so nervous before every match. It's well, see, so I fun. They'll so say, did oh, I. If you only get nothing nervous else. before the big ones, but I get anxious. I don't get nervous. I get anxious. So I feel like there's a difference. 
So maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. I don't. But I get I, nervous I, before the big ones, before like big pay per views, oh, yeah. I get nerves or something. But before a good match, a big match, or just between like if it's raw or something, I get anxious because I feel like you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. As a perfectionist, as a professional, and as like for someone like us, and, and and Natty, that I'm sure that you can say this is because I've watched you come into the locker room navigate that locker room for the last decade and not only of being like a second and we were going to talk about this but like being a second generation but from a family a whole family of wrestling like that's a whole different precedence like we talk second generation and stuff every now and then but I think that you really um not only like continue to stay the course and get your and stay on television stay relevant do cool things unique things but you constantly challenge yourself and you challenge the girls that are in the locker room to like perform and act to a certain level and you challenge the girls that you're working with in the ring to perform to a certain level you know what i mean i think that you've yeah people like yeah. lana who you you've pretty much grabbed her by the hand you know what I mean? And like helped her because she does have a genuine passion and love for the business. And you, that resonates with you. Like for me, like that's what the stuff that really resonates with yeah. me. Like the Lana's and the lives of the world or the Faye's yeah. and the Sasha's and people who genuinely love this business. Yeah. And love it. And that's what I, I even love. Like Lacey Evans is fun. Like I get her character. I get yeah. her funny. She's entertaining. Like, and I love to be entertained. You know what I mean? But I love to find people who are passionate about their craft, you know what I mean? If they love it, I, like I, like Lana, like Lana, I went away. One of the first times I met her, I went backstage and she pulled me aside and she goes, I really want to get in the ring. I don't want to be a sidekick anymore. Um, and I go, well, you need to show up early to the building and work with fit in the ring. You have all these awesome agents and then like ask the girls if they want to come in early, that kind of stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, I really love that girl. Yeah. She, want, she wants to, she wants to make something like, she doesn't want to just be, I candy. Yeah. Like, she wants she work, you know, that's what I will yeah. say about Lana. Lana Lana has work ethic. She wants to work hard. She actually a lot of people don't know, but she's been flying in out of wherever she's she has a place in Nashville and in uh Los Angeles and she comes in twice a week, flies in to work with me. We have a ring, TJ and I have a ring. And we're very blessed to have the ring because during this pandemic we don't have live events. So I felt so strongly about getting a ring because I was like if I'm not in a wrestling ring for like a week, I'm just really rusty. So mm -hmm. I need to be in a ring and I just need to feel what it feels like. And so anybody that I, I've opened it up to anybody that wants to train with me as far as like the girls that I work with. Um, and yeah, we and don't want Lana, to go from coming in from the street, showing up, knocking on your yeah. door. <laughs> well, <laughs> you gotta be COVID anybody, tested. Can, yeah. you can if I sleep over, like no. <laughs> yeah, come on over. But, but like the girls in the locker room is what I mean. Like the, you know, anybody that's in our locker room that wants to get extra reps, whether it's Lana, whether it's Liv, whether it's Ruby, um, to the girls in our locker room, I've opened it up so that, you know, they can get, get in the ring and get extra reps with me. And Lana comes, she flies in and she get, gets in the ring and she trains with me. And I, one thing I try to instill in girls is the things that I, I like myself in matches. What's the story? What, what, what is it that we're trying to tell? What's the big, what's the big picture? Like, what's the big finish? Um, and I was, you know, even when you look at the match yesterday with Lana, she didn't have to do a whole lot in the match because the story was, the story was different. Like, it was almost like, everybody forgot about her and that that was like you know there was a there even though it was a it was a unique finish a unique ending like there was a there was a there's a rhyme and a reason for it and, and we're not quite there yet but everybody i think will understand hopefully soon but but my my point is is that like i try to teach the girls that i work with and, and remind myself that you know whomever it is that is getting the big win if they're getting a win they've got to beat somebody that means something so yeah. if you know, I think it's really important to have balance in a match because if nobody, I, I don't like, I don't enjoy watching matches where it's just very one-sided. I want to see, you know, if Lana beats somebody that means something, it means so much more for her, yeah, you yeah. know? So when she finally does win, you know, essentially she beat Bianca and Nia last night, which made her an even bigger star because she, right. she, you know, even though she didn't pin them, like she overcame all this stuff and for example, if I'm in a match with Charlotte, I, you know, and if, if, if Charlotte is winning the match, I always, you know, and, and this may be too inside, but, but um, if, if I'm in a match with somebody like Charlotte and I look back on our 2014 match at TakeOver, you know, it was such a good match because we take the fans on a roller coaster ride of like, you don't know who's going to win, but Natty looks really like, 
Like, I, I give Charlotte a run for her money in that match. I make her work for it so that when she finally beats me, it means something, you know? And, and so that it's fair, because I don't want to see a match where the person that's winning basically just kicks ass throughout the whole match. And like, what yeah. do they win? Yeah. What yeah. are they winning? They're not really winning anything, they, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I look at some of my favorite matches, like Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels, the Iron Man match, or Bret Hart versus Steve Austin, or, you know, um, some of those great classics, or even Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. It's like, you don't know who's going to win. But when, when you know, Shawn Michaels beat Bret Hart in that Iron Man match and discovered his, boy, you know, re reached his boyhood dream, you, go, you went, because Shawn Michaels beat, Bret Hart, he just means so much more because he right. overcame that. But if Bret Hart didn't mean anything and didn't like, so yeah. it's about teaching balance. Like Lana, yeah. if you're, you know, if you're going to get that big comeuppance, you got to sell, you got to make people feel something. It's not about doing the fanciest things in the ring. It's about bringing yeah. out, it's making people feel something so yeah. that when you do finally win, it's like, oh my God, she did it. Yeah. Instead right. of just winning every match. Sort of. You know, we, we could be watching from home. We could be watching. In many cases, I've like hosted pay-per-view parties where that's the most fun, right? When you have the camaraderie of all the other fans and you're sitting there and you're all collectively on that journey with, with, with the match going on or with whoever right. that you, your hero is. And it's, it's, it's very emotional. It's, I, I can't tell you. The la I think it was Royal Rumble when Drew, Drew won, I think, was it uh, this past January? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the whole bar erupted. I mean, obviously we're in the UK too. And I, Drew's a fabulous guy. I've worked with many oh, times, yeah. but it's just, even if I didn't know him, I would have felt like I did because it was just this, like people were crying. I might've cried. I might have something in my eye or both, but <laughs> it's emotional, you know? Yeah. No, it's and yeah. It, because, yeah, because it was, a, you know, it was a struggle. Drew lost his job and, you know, he came back to WWE and a lot of people didn't know whether he'd be able to hang. And, you know, you kind of follow that journey and WWE is good with that you know, as far as putting together like those, you know, 24s or those specials about like seeing things that you never real, like I watched Drew's documentary and I was like, wow, that like, I forgot that he got fired, yeah. you know? And, and I forgot that like, he got let go and like it, it I, cause like, you see him on top and you see him like, oh, he's the champion. But then you forget like, yeah. well, you know, the journey it, it was like back up there. Yeah. 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 He needed to yeah. be let go to kind of grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both. That's almost what it is, too, though, Natty. You think about it, like, when he left, but now that he's come back, like, it almost seasoned him and made him, like, a, a really, like, manly character. Like, not that he wasn't manly, but he was still very young, and he looked very boyish, and he was cute, you know what I mean? Where now he's come back, and he looks like a, a man's man. And he, yeah. you, everything he says, you believe everything he does, and he's a different level performer now, I think, than when he was left the first time you know so yeah. it's all growing pains like I thought like I went even when I went back and when I first left and and that was or got fired or however you want to look at it but it was like a very emotional time for me but then to leave and like grow as a human being on a personal level it was almost like one of those blessings in disguise that you don't even realize until you escape and then when I come back now I can look at it the whole thing like the whole picture yeah. the locker room of where we sit of the whole thing from a different perspective, you know what I mean? And a more, I, I'm very grateful and a very like, just because you've, you've been through so much and you've had to change and shift and survive the whole wave of everything that, you know, yeah. we're yeah. life or it's, it is, it's, I don't know. But it makes me feel something for you and for your journey because life is tough and you, you know, going through stuff is what kind of makes you really, I don't know, I feel like it makes you well-rounded. You know, when yeah. you go through things, I think that's why TJ is such a good producer because he, you know, when he got hurt, he had to take time off. He had to like really step back and like really like look at things differently. And now he like has this whole different perspective. And I think that's what really makes him great at what he does, you know, yeah. and, and everybody's, everybody's journey is different, whether you quit, whether you get fired, whether you get injured, whether you, but it's just about how you handle it. It's like, you know, there's a, there's a great quote about like the brick walls, are, you know, the brick walls are there for a reason. They're there to show you how much you want it. And it's not necessarily about you know, how much you want to get back in the ring, but it's just about like overcoming something and per persevering. Yeah. And yeah. anybody that I know that has a really great character and that's really just like an awesome human has been through some crazy stuff in their life mm -hmm. and they are better people for it. They are better yeah. people and they are, they contribute more to society because they have reference of what it's like to be up here, down here and everywhere yeah. in between so that, you know, they, they just have balance and they know what it's like. You, you have to know what it's like to, to feel like 
crap in order to know what it's like to feel good. Yeah. Right, right. So, right. It. Totally. Yeah. Well, speaking of appreciation, Mickey, we don't want to leave you out of who you're wearing, what you're drinking, oh, what, you're drinking what you made, because I'm telling you what, let me just tell you a quick little backstory. And to close us out, I'm glad that we have Mickey here because she is amazing in the ring, sure, but amazing in the kitchen, definitely. My husband and yeah, I um, yeah. had never had Southern food before. He's British, British AF, as MVP would say. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we went and had um, a wonderful meal at Mickey's house, and it was like cornbread, ham, <laughs> green beans. It was, and he talks about it to this day. That was years ago, and That's I can't wait to see it shared. I don't remember that. I do a lot of, I have a lot of, um, we, we love to eat in my family. And we do not count calories. And so how, and so, cause you brought such a delicious, healthy salad, Natty. And then even like the, the appetizer was so like just delicious and, and a delicious meat. Mine, you have to watch your waistline because uh -oh. there is an, if you have diabetes, I would not suggest this dish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited already. Okay. If you have any type, if you are watching the calories, counting the calories, I do not suggest it. But these are my homemade, MJ's famous candy yams that I make from scratch that I have to peel the potatoes, which is like my idea of hell besides an ice cube. Besides <laughs> being like a cold, any type, anything below 70 degrees. It, to peel the potatoes, cut, cut them up finely. I use Granny Smith apples, cinnamon, nutmeg, um, vanilla, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of cloves, walnuts that I like kind of crumble up in my hands and craisins and then top them with a little mini marshmallows. So it's literally a heart attack. Wait. Wow. So wow. Wow. Welcome. I usually like have to do at least an hour and a half of cardio because of them. But it's the yeah, most delicious way to go. Delicious candy DMs. And then what I'm drinking is this Stella Rosa. <laughs> I think this was a solid eight or eight dollars, maybe. I, oh. <laughs> okay, so she told us briefly, she was like, I'm not sure I like this blueberry wine. Is it blueberry wine? What the it's blueberry, yeah. but it's a sparkling blueberry. It's very sweet. Ooh. Hi, boo boo. Hey, baby, baby, baby. 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 Look at Pixie There's run up to see us. She knows us. <laughs> yeah. So, but what I'm wearing is, I will tell you, I'm wearing this. Um, you guys know I, I followed this Operation Underground Railroad, the rescue. And so they sent me a, a giveaway baggie that here, I'm drinking out of the cup that came in this bag. Aww. So I'm doing this giveaway on my social media. We're all going to do it. We're all going to sign an eight by 10 along with Operation Underground Railroad is going to send out whoever we decide is the winner. Um, this awesome thing. There's a little satchel. Look at this little. That's cute. It's not Louis Vuitton, Natty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's like Indiana a Jones. Indiana Jones wears it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go out there and climb a mountain. And when I mean a mountain, I mean a small foothill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Um, this is the story, kind of like one of the stories where the Operation Toussaint, where they went in. You know, they do a lot of work where they go in and they try to child stop um, child slavery and a lot of the human trafficking and stuff. Wow. So come in this sweet That's awesome. Sweet bag, and they'll send it right to you. And we're gonna send out eight. eight, 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 eight. But it also came with this. Can you read it? It's backwards. Oh yes. Oh, their logo is awesome. too. Yeah. Oh, you are rescued. Yeah, we're gonna include yeah. all of the information and the wow. description of the show for sure. And, also, and, 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 and Mickey, why are you wearing a ponytail? Oh, because Natty isn't the same. Oh, I wore my ponytail for you, babe. Because you said keep your ponytails high. And your yes, stand and your higher. Yes, high Sorry. standards and high ponies. <laughs> yes. You know what else we talked about is about how you have an animal for everyone. Like I was a pony, I think, for a little minute, and then I turned it. There's a wombat. Yeah, I have a couple of people that are wombats. Victoria might be a wombat. What am I? I, I was like, you think she'll bestow, and this is the perfect way to close out the show. I think. Why well, do you, you were, choose? If you were an animal, Val, I'm just trying to think. Oof. Oh, God. I was like, what if she gives me like a freaking uh, gutter, a mutt in the pound? <laughs> a scavenger? A scavenger. A no, I think, I think you might be like a, um, you know what? You could be a gazelle. You could be a gazelle. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. I like I that. I feel like I'm a, I'm a cocker spaniel, and Mickey is a pony, and Victoria, a.k.a. Lisa Marie, is a wombat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mind if I now go by the name Gazelle Bunchin? 
<laughs> yes, you can be yes, you can be gazelle. Um, TJ is a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> How does he feel about that? Uh, he's okay with it. It's he's a short hair blonde chihuahua that shivers. <laughs> okay. He's a little timid. Timid. When he gets excited, does he piddle on the carpet? Is that is that why he's named that? He gets a little kind of the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that oh. face. Oh, oh my goodness. He looks thrilled. This, this is Sheldon. I woke him up. That's why I woke him up. Oh. Like, what would I, I do? This is Sheldon. He's like this. The, the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, I would grab two paws, but he's sleeping. He's right oh. there. I've been noticing oh. in the background that we've been seeing some oh. animal activity. It's actually been hilarious. Yeah. I didn't want to say oh. anything while you're talking, but I was like, oh, there they are. They're famous. I know. They're so cute. They love Christmas. I'm so excited. I. I'm gonna, as soon as I'm done with you guys, I'm gonna put on some candles, put on some Christmas music, and like, oh, I just wanna yay. feel good, yes. you know? Girl, just, yeah. you, you deserve it, you deserve it. And as Lisa said, yeah. you are so inspiring to, you know, men and women and us included. Um, let's just close out the show and tell everyone what we're thankful for. Guest of honor, Miss Natty, what are you thankful for? I am so thankful for my family, and my family is the most important thing to me, um, and being able to, you know, help them in any way that I can emotionally and, and just, you know, just be there for them. That is what I am thankful for. I love my family and they're there for me. So I'm grateful for that too. I love so that. So definitely family. Family. Hey. Nichols Pickles. Um, are you, are you, you know, I don't year? know how I top that one, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely <laughs> thankful for my family, for my friends, for my circle, for the people that I keep in my circle to keep me, you know, grounded. And um, yeah, I'm grateful for my son and the ability to like, work even in such madness and provide a life for my you know son that i'm i'm proud of and that makes him happy that brings me such joy he brings me my oh that's wonderful yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm grateful for wrestling obviously for bringing us all together yeah, but, yeah. Um, good friends because i feel like good people find good people and once you find good people you have to keep them close to you and so i love each yes. and every one of you for different reasons and for obviously this crazy wrestling business brought us all together in some form or fashion, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great, man. Okay. Lisa, what about you? Oh my God. I'm great. I'm just grateful to like enjoy life with this lockdown thing. Um, I'm actually enjoying being confined to my place. <laughs> I'm be completely honest, um, you know, and spending more time, you know, with my boyfriend, like I, we never got to do that. We were always traveling. We're doing, we're talking business. We're like away from each other. And now I'm home. And then I'm like, of course, having wrestling like as our core. And then we're still connected with all of our friends because of our wrestling. And because we know each other's lives, you know, we know what, what we've all been through, that kind of thing. Right. It's, it, it's a, it is a roller coaster. And I'm, I'm just thankful to be part of this, this group here. That's what I'm I thankful love that. for. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful for all of you. I'm thankful for family and friends. I'm thankful for important things in my life, like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City <laughs> and RuPaul's Drag Race. And, uh, but in all seriousness, for <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, I'm very serious about that. But in other all seriousness, I'm I'm so thankful to be able to support myself even virtually around a support system of grown ass women and inspiring women like you guys. So cheers to you guys. Cheers, oh, cheers to all of us. Yes. Happy cheers. Thanksgiving. May our campaign be champagne. Yes. Thank you girls. And thank you oh, so much for having you. me on. I'm so honored. I'm truly so honored oh, that I was gosh. invited. Thank so. you so much. We, we love you, Maddie. Here's here's we love you guys. Yay. Oh. We're feeling well, I'm love. I'm sending I lots of love. You're, watching, you're feeling kitty, love as well. Kitty kisses. Kitty kisses. Kitty kisses. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are feeling love as well. Please like, subscribe, and click that bell icon to enable notifications. To our fabulous guest, Miss Natty, happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for happy. being here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is the word. Go, yo, go.